So with the uh, veterinarians, they've done the co completed the Koch's postulates so that they've established the cause-effect relationship with this new entity. And, and, it, they, and they published this? They haven't published. Okay. And the reason is that we don't know what it is. <laughs> it's not a fungus, it's not a bacteria, it's not a mycoplasma or uh, a virus about the same size as a, as a small virus. Uh, you have to ma magnify it uh, 38, 40,000 times so to, you have to see picture, it. They have pictures of it. Have pictures of it, oh yes. See the interactions with it. You can, uh, uh, they can now culture it so that it, it's uh, self-replicating in culture. It doesn't grow very well by itself. So that, like most of our very fastidious organisms, uh, tends to die out with three or four subculturing, but grows very well with other organisms. So if you have a yeast or a bacteria or a fungus in the culture, that this entity then uh, grows very well. waiting on DN getting enough material, uh, pure material for DNA analysis, but also looking at some other uh, possibilities. So we haven't published uh, just because until you can put a, put a name on it, all it does is create a great deal of speculation. And uh, that's one of the reasons why the letter was uh, sent as a very private letter. Uh, the other reason was that it, has, it could have a tremendous potential impact on our exports because where we find high populations of this are in our soybeans and our corn, especially the, if this, this novel entity. It's a novel entity, the, but it's new to actually, science. But it's in the it's in the it's actually in the, the uh, feed. Oh the yeah. Corn. Okay. If, if and it can persist there because most viruses don't they. Well, it's not a virus. Okay, well, that's right. We said it. we don't know what it is. I'm sorry. I just made it something. <coughs> that, that's not what yet, I said. About that yet, size. Yet to, been, yet to been identified. But but uh, we know a lot about it. We know what it is. But we don't know what it is. Because it appears to be common in nature, but new to science. And so novel to our knowledge, and that's why it's <clears throat> been a little slow to get all the information because we're working with something from scratch. And uh, Do you have any guesses as to what the, how this organism came about? Is it because of the, the uh, chelating effect of the glyphosate creating an environment that sort of bred this new, new entity one from the soil? One of the possibility, it's, it's boiling down to one of three potentials. Mm -hmm. And none of the three are, are happy uh, considerations and so rather than, than speculate on them we, we felt like it's better to, to have that knowledge so then we know what how to address or how to respond uh, because their the response will be a little different for all of them but what, what we do know is that it causes reproductive failure both infertility as well as uh, miscarriage for cattle, horses, pigs, sheep, poultry, and we can anticipate with that broadest spectrum of, of animal species, which is extremely unusual, that uh, it'll also be with humans. see an increasing uh, frequency of miscarriage, a uh, dramatic increase in infertility in uh, human populations in just the last uh, eight to ten years. So this that, has been documented, this decrease in fertility in human populations? Yes. Okay. You look at the number of fertility clinics that uh, have sprung up. Uh, one area is told that they, where they had one in the past, they have 14 now. Hmm. I had a woman call me and say, well, let me tell you what my situation is. Said my five-year-old came home from kindergarten and said, Mom, why don't I have any brothers and sisters? And she said, you do. You've got an older brother and a younger sister. What he was referring to was he had a twin or a triplet. He didn't, and as uh, this woman said when she checked, 
uh, around with the other parents, the only way they could have children was through in vitro fertilization. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look, multiple, it, multiple gestations. If you look at the, uh, where this entity is, again, when the veterinarians, when they had identified it, the American Cattlemen's Association testified before Congress in 2002 that there were two conditions that were threatening the industry. One was this reproductive failure. Uh, as many as 40 to 50 percent of the pregnant animals losing their, their uh, offspring. The other one was a premature aging. Accelerate, well, by what rate about? Well, when they take an animal, a two-year-old or a two, two-and-a-half-year-old animal, prime beef uh, to market, it's downgraded as though it's an eight- or a ten-year-old cow. <laughs> Holy! And uh, the studies three years ago in Iowa uh, with non-GMO and GMO feed show you that. I can show you some, some pictures of what, what that tallow looks like around the stomach lining. It's yellow. Uh, it's not that pretty white uh, uh, color, it's, it's the yellow tallow, just like, again, it's premature age. They've ruled out all of the other known causes, so we can rule out the PERS virus and the bot toxins and the mycotoxins and all of the other known causes, but these are the, this is the situation. So when the veterinarians wanted to find the source for this entity, they went to the feed. The first place they found it in high concentrations was in the uh, soybean meal. Hmm. Well, since then we find it in uh, in the corn, we find it in silage, uh, but primarily in high concentrations only where we have a genetically engineered crop that's had glyphosate applied to it. And those are the crops that we also see, the high gosses wilt, the high SDS. So they, they're all correlated together in that relationship. The other place you see it, though, is where they've used a manure that has a high glyphosate residue level in it, that, and the manure also has very high concentrations if the, if the chickens or the animals have been fed uh, these feeds with high concentrations. And we see it when that manure is applied to pastures and the cattle graze on it, that we also see high infertility rates there so that it occurs in the placenta, in the uh, fetus, occurs in uh, sperm. And our inseminators are stating that uh, it takes twice as much semen now to get a conception, and as many as four to eight uh, inseminations rather than the typical 1.2 to 1.5 for a dairy because of that reduced uh, fertility. I was on the plane with, with a bull breeder uh, commented that 40% of his, his bulls he's had to pull out of service because they can't get conception anymore. If you look at uh, uh, the decrease in human sperm, it's uh, less than half what it was 20 years ago. And that's from, again, attributable to the endocrine hormone uh, disrupting chemicals. We've had atrazine, we've had a number of others. Well, uh, glyphosate's uh, very potent endocrine uh, disruptor, hmm. so that it's a half part per million. You see an inhibition of aromatase and uh, other functions in the endocrine hormone system. So not just for reproduction, but for thyroid function, for uh, pituitary function, any of those other levels, because all of those entities require critical micronutrients hmm. in that process for uh, as the keys for those enzyme engines that drive those processes. When you have a, a very potent chelator, then it disrupts all kinds of systems, not just the EPSPS system that we find in, in certain microorganisms and plants, but also all of those other systems involved in liver function and uh, blood function and uh, hormonal function, they all go right back to that basic uh, nutrient process that keeps those systems functional. <laughs>